Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for turning my inheritance nightmare into the ultimate surprise. I'm 37F, and I've got two siblings, Mason, 43M, and Brittany, 29F. Our dad died when we were kids because of some undiagnosed heart issue, and everything went downhill from there. His parents gave him and my mom this old family house with some land when they got married. His parents really kept us afloat until they passed too. My mom, well, she wasn't doing too hot after dad died. For five long years, she was stuck in this deep, dark depression. But eventually, she pulled through. She did right by us, but man, she was always pinching pennies. We had clothes, sure, but no fun family trips, no splurging on vacations or anything. She was tough, but she ignored all the signs when her health started slipping. We tried, over and over, to get her to see a doctor, but she just wouldn't listen. Recently, she passed away from late-stage cancer, and let me tell you, she left us with more than just the grief. Mason and Brittany both got more than $150,000 in each, along with all the sentimental, expensive stuff and furniture. Me? I didn't get any of the cash. What I did get was the house, the land, and some small things here and there. But here's the kicker, the house and land aren't worth anything close to what my siblings got, mostly because mom had to sell off chunks over the years to cover her medical bills. The place was falling apart. I moved in with her near the end, just to help out. The plan was always for the house to be sold after she passed, and the money split three ways. I even had plans to move in with a friend's family to make the process easier once mom was gone. Most of my stuff has been sitting in storage for nearly a year, waiting for that day to come. Since I work from home, I was the one watching over the health workers and nurses to make sure they treated her right. But Mason, he was more worried about them walking off with mom's wedding ring, since she was so attached to it. We all agreed to bury it with her when the time came, so I made sure to keep it safe. Mason and Brittany were there a lot, visiting three to six times a week. Mason's got two kids, Brittany's got one, and they brought them too, though near the end, the kids stopped coming as much. It was too hard for them to see her like that. In the last few weeks before mom passed, she had me packing up boxes for Mason and Brittany with the things she wanted them to have. My siblings hated that I was doing it, but it's what she wanted. The will was read, they went through their boxes to make sure nothing was missed, and then they left me to deal with the house. Once some time passed, I finally felt ready to start working on the place. The house? It's dingy. There's no way it's worth $150,000, and, but with the housing market being so crazy, I figure I got lucky. It needed a ton of repairs, the roof, the chimney, the water heater, pipes, doors, windows for heat, you name it. Inside, it's all dark wood that just sucks up all the light. Mason and Brittany offered to lend me money, but I said no. I'd been saving for a small apartment or something, and I figured I could always rent out rooms to local college students to make some money back. Then, as I started going through the house, everything left to me, as stated in the will, I began finding things. And I mean, things. There was money stashed in books, hidden under beds, tucked into fancy sheets, even stuffed inside teapots and cups that had been passed down for generations. Jewelry, too. I found it in random boxes, hidden in the attic, in vents, sock drawers, you name it. Some of it was ugly enough to be costume jewelry, but I'm glad I kept it all together because when I had it appraised, it was worth almost half of what my siblings got in cash. Even the stuff I thought was costume jewelry turned out to be worth something. And I'm still finding things. There were antique items, fancy watches, brand new clothes with tags still on bags, shoes, belts, all just hidden away, never talked about. Some of the clothes still had receipts, and since that of Brittany nor I could wear them, I returned what I could and started selling the rest online. I used the money from all of that to cover the immediate repairs, and it almost paid for everything. I kept a little jewelry for myself, I'm not really into it, and set aside some for Brittany and Mason's daughter. The rest I sold and put into savings. I also put aside some of the bags, belts, and watches for them and their families. When I invited everyone over, I gave them the stuff I'd found, thinking they might appreciate it. They were happy, no major arguments. But then Mason asked if I'd found any cash. I tried to downplay it, saying it was mostly just loose change and small bills. He wanted to see it, so I brought out this giant water container I'd been tossing all the coins into. He looked at it and said, That's a lot of coins, you hitting up the laundromat or something? I rolled my eyes, told him I had a washer and dryer. He said, whatever, but then dropped the bomb. He wanted to split the cash I'd found and the money I made from selling the clothes. I just stared at him like, are you serious? They both got massive cash inheritances, all the sentimental stuff, and more. 
I got the house, the mess, the repairs, and the little nice things I found along the way, I gave them without being asked. He called me a greedy asshole, told me to forget it. Brittany gave me the side eye but didn't say a word. And now I feel guilty for not telling them just how much money I'd actually found. But I used it all for the house, nothing else. Just so we're clear, mom's debts were paid, and she had money set aside for the funeral and cremation. So, I tell Update. Well, things escalated pretty quickly. I'd already had outside cameras around the house from when I moved in, but after some advice, I went ahead and installed more, around the property line, inside the house in key spots, and near the garage. I also put up some no trespassing signs while I look for a good fencing company. The property's just small enough that I can afford a fence. And I changed all the locks the day I read that suggestion. Mom used to hide a spare key in a plant for Brittany, who was always losing her keys, so I got rid of that too. Good thing I did all that because, two days after my initial post, I had to run into town for groceries and a few quick errands. I live out in the sticks, so my neighbors aren't close enough to notice much. While I was out, I got a notification on my phone that there was movement at the house. I checked it, and there was Mason, getting out of his car. He looked around, tried his key, and when it didn't work, he got mad and kicked over the flower pot where the old spare key used to be. I spoke to him through the camera, saying, that was rude. He jumped like he'd seen a ghost. I asked him what he was doing, and he got flustered, asking why I put up cameras. I said, because I'm a single woman living alone in the woods, you dumb shit. He shuffled around a bit, then said he'd be back to talk and left. I sent the video of him trying to get in while I wasn't home to him, his wife, Brittany, and her fiancé. I told him I'd chase the locks because I didn't know who mom had given keys to, and because of his stunt, no one was getting a new key. I don't try to break into your house when you're not home. Mason lost it, sending me a bunch of nasty texts, trying to guilt me for putting up the cameras. I just told him if he didn't want to get caught, he shouldn't be sneaking around. That's on him, not me. Now, his wife's threatening to take the kids and leave him, and Brittany's fiancé doesn't want Mason to have their spare key for emergencies anymore. Somehow, I don't think this is over. Time to adopt a big dog. At this point I couldn't help but feel completely overwhelmed. The house, the memories, the responsibility. I didn't ask for any of this, but here I am trying to make sense of it all. My brother's reaction just adds another layer of stress I wasn't ready for. I thought maybe after everything, we could support each other. But now, with him acting like this, it's hard to even feel like family. I don't want to lose them, but at the same time, I need to protect what's mine. This house might not be much, but it's the last piece of my parents I have left. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day, feel free to drop a comment if you got more to share.